What are the 12 biggest blunders that cruisers make when it comes to disembarking the ship? Hi, I'm Gary Bembridge. This is another of my tips to travelers. These are 12 things that I want to share with you to make sure when you next leave your cruise, you don't make the same mistakes as lots of cruisers make, starting with this one. First of all, never go for self-disembarkation unless you are really sure that you can manage all of your luggage and potentially having to carry it down multiple stair levels and multiple decks because the elevators could be really full. Self-disembarkation is great because if you can carry your own bags off the ship, you normally first off the ship so you can get off the ship really early and you can get off out back home or off to connections or do whatever you want to do. However, you will be given no help whatsoever. You have to be able to carry everything. So you need to bear in mind the elevators might be really, really busy and you might have to carry those bags right down to the gangway. So really, before you go for disembarkation, make sure that you can carry all of your bags. Next is making sure that if you have put your bags out to be collected and taken onto the pier for you the night before, that you have actually kept enough clothes to get off the ship on. There's many jokes about people having to madly scramble around to find clothes or have to leave the ship with a bathrobe because they've packed their clothes. Absolutely make sure that you've left enough clothes to get off the ship and particularly if it's going to be hot or cold, you've got the appropriate clothes. The other thing that I recommend you do is always make sure that you've got a nice big bag, just some sort of hold or bag that you can just chuck everything that you might have left behind or forgotten to put in your bags that you can then repack once you get off the ship. But be really, really careful. Make sure that you've packed the right and enough clothes to get off the ship. The other big blunder that people make is they book their flight home or to the next destination either too early or too late. A cruise ship will normally get into port seven or eight o'clock. However, you're not going to be able to disembark until the ship is cleared. So depending on your grade and status, you might find that you're only getting off the ship quite late. Most cruise lines will give you a recommended time that you book a flight. I would normally say aim for noon or later because you, even if you're getting off the ship quite late, you still got time to get to the airport and get on board. The other mistake that people make, and this is one thing that I do particularly when working with agents, is they try and book you on a flight that's too late. So you waste a complete day. Most airlines only open their check-in desk two hours before a flight. So the danger is if you've got a flight late afternoon or early evening, you could be sitting at the airport for many hours, hanging around until check-in opens before you could go through. So booking your flight too early or too late is really, really a big blunder that people make. Getting the right time around about noonish time, if you can, is the optimal time for a flight. The next blunder that people make is they just accept the time they're given. So normally when you disembark, you're given a color code and you put that in your bags to put out and then you use that color code to get off the ship and you're given an allocated time. If the time doesn't suit you, it's too early or it's even too late, Go and try and negotiate because you'll normally find that the guest services has some flexibility and they will let you go on a different time. So you might want to get off early because you want to go off sightseeing or get to that flight. Or you actually might want to get off late because you're checking into a hotel and you can't check in until two o'clock or whatever. So always go and negotiate. Just don't accept the time you're given and try and negotiate a time that works for you. The fifth big blunder that people make is not carefully checking their statement before they get off the ship. Now, normally you can check it online. There's lots of apps. You can go to guest services and check it during the cruise, which I recommend you do so if there's any errors, you can pick it up quite early on. Normally you'll get a statement delivered to you overnight. Check it really, really carefully because once you're off the ship, trying to correct errors is almost impossible. It's really difficult to do. And I have stories from so many people that have ended up with all sorts of charges which they dispute, but they didn't check really carefully. Nowadays, because of technology, you can check as you go. If you don't have an app, I always go and get guest services to print me out a invoice at various points of time. But check before you get off that invoice. Really, really important. The sixth blunder that people make and we've all kind of done it, is leaving stuff in the cabin. Now, there's two really, really critical things. First of all, check the safe, because that's where you're going to have your money, your passport, valuables, your medication. 
really make sure that you've checked the safe. Now, one of the tips that I got from someone once is put something that you're gonna to have to wear the next day. So one of your shoes or something in the safe, if you wanna keep stuff in the safe, because when you get ready in the morning, you're gonna be looking for the shoe and it's in the safe. So that's a really good tip. The other thing to do is do a triple check in every single drawer. Cruise cabins have loads of storage, lots of little nooks and crannies, and inevitably you've put some charges or something you haven't really used, some clothes perhaps that you brought but you didn't use. And so many times I have found on a triple check of a cabin stuff in little drawers that I'd forgotten about. So when you've packed, before you put the cases out, if you're traveling with someone, get them to do a double check in every single drawer. Before you leave, literally go and double check so you don't leave stuff behind. Because once you're off the ship, it's really hard to get it back. Sort of linked to that, another blunder that people make is not getting their passport. Depending on where you're cruising to, you might actually have to hand your passport in to guest services, which they keep as you go through the different immigration checks in the different countries you go to. And then on the last day, you can go and fetch your passport. Sometimes you can fetch it the day before. Really, really important. Make sure you get your passport. I have been on trips before where people have got on the excursion bus or the transfer and realized they haven't got their passport. It's a real hassle getting back on the ship. So absolutely make sure. What I always do is I write a big note for myself. I stick it on the safe or put it in the safe, put it on my bags to remind myself to fetch the passport. The next blunder that I see people make is forgetting what color their luggage tag is and not keeping the little receipt to help you get off the ship. So you're given those colored tags which you put on your bags, which you put out, and you ask to keep the little tag, and that's what you show often to get off or to show that you are in that particular time slot to get off the ship. And often you have to show that because they control you, and without that, they won't let you off the ship and they make you wait till later. The other big issue is, of course, if you've forgotten your color and you walk into where all the bags are, where there could be thousands and thousands of bags and you then have to try and remember what color you are and where your bag could be. So really important, make sure you remember the color and the little tag. One of the things I do is you normally get a little piece of paper when you get those luggage tags which will tell you your color on that. So I just file that with my passport or my documents. So even if I've forgotten the little chitty, forgotten what color, I have the original document that tells me what color I am and I know where to go and find my bags. The next big blunder, although it's not the end of the world, is people leaving their key card in their cabin. Often you know when you leave a hotel, if you've self-checked out, you can just leave the card in the room and off you go. That doesn't work on a cruise ship. You need that key card to get off the ship. So if you've left in your cabin, you get to get off the ship, you're gonna to have to go all the way back to your cabin and find the steward if your cabin is closed and get the key card. So always make sure you've got your key card with you right through until you're off the ship. One of the big challenges that you're gonna face on disembarkation day is elevators. Lots of people, particularly if you're on a big ship, are gonna be trying to get off the ship. So everybody's, because they've got their bags with their self-disembarking or just got their hand luggage, are likely to be using the elevators and they're gonna be really busy. So a couple of little tips and tricks if you don't wanna walk down the stairs. First of all, avoid the midship elevators because normally, you're gonna find that's the most busy of all. So use the elevators at either side of the ship. But the best tip of all is push up. Go up at least one level because the lift going up is gonna be not very busy. So go up to come down. And that's your best chance of getting in a lift with luggage and being able to get down. You'll probably drive people crazy because they'll see you do it, but it's an absolute must if the elevators are busy. Another big mistake that people make is they take things from the cabin. The most obvious of these are things like the bathrobes, the umbrellas, things that are in the cabin supplied as part of the cabin amenities. If you take one of those items, it's a big mistake because you're gonna be charged for it. And the price that they put on those things is pretty hefty. So don't bother taking things from the cabin. Now, the, probably the big exception to that is if you are still on one of those cruise ships that haven't moved to refillable toiletries, you've got the little miniatures of toiletries. If you really wanna take those with you, my best advice is take some of those halfway through the cruise, put them to one side in a cupboard or something, and the, they'll be replenished so you know that it's gonna be okay. But be very careful about what you take off the ship because you will probably be charged a big premium for taking those off. Another big, tip slash blunder slash opportunity is 
there are different cruise lines that are making it even easier to get off and disembark easier. Obviously, one of the obvious ways of doing it is if you're cruising in a suite, you get preferential disembarkation early. As you are more and more loyal to a cruise line and you work your way up the different tier levels, you'll also find that you get early disembarkation. But there are increasingly a number of cruise lines that are starting to build in other things. So you can sometimes buy a specific pass which gives you early embarkation and disembarkation. But you'll find in some ports, for example, certainly at the time of recording, on some Royal Caribbean cruises, you're able to actually check in your bags on the ship and the bags are then taken to the airport and to the airline so that you don't even have to worry about taking your bags off at all and taking them to the airport. You'll also find, for example, on Disney cruises, if you're staying in their parks in Orlando, they will do an arrangement where you can check your bags in there and they'll be taken to Port Canaveral and onto the ship. So increasingly find out if there's any little opportunities that you can have from the cruise lines to ease through the whole process of disembarkation. There's a whole bundle of blunders that people make that end up making disembarkation day quite stressful. These are some of the things that I do to basically make disembarkation much easier and avoid some of the blunders that people make. I have loads more videos packed full of cruising advice and tips, so why don't you watch another one of those right now?